Happy Monday afternoon. It's time to chart with Mr. Dan Merle. Yes. So talk about that box office, Dan. So many box office stories. Some weeks we're just kind of making it up. This yeah. week we have a bunch of box office things to talk about. You have interesting things to say about the box office every week, but this is a historic week. This is a historic week. Well, first of all, let's get to headlines 1A, which is that after six weeks, there is there is a movie that has unseated Black Panther at the top of the domestic box office, Pacific Rim Uprising. As Giant I robots. Believe, I believe, uh, well, you weren't here last. I think Billy might have predicted last week. I don't remember. We has predicted unseated, it. Did we? Yes, on our morning show, Screen Junkies Universe. Which there we if you go. Don't watch it. You should I predicted that it would, in fact, unseat it, but by a very narrow margin. Well, it wasn't quite as narrow as some of us thought. It yeah. was eleven million dollars. Pacific Rim Uprising debuted at twenty-eight million dollars, which it is a number one debut, but a bit lackluster for a movie of that size. Yes. It was a hundred and fifty million dollar budgeted movie. However. This was always going to be a global play. It opened almost everywhere in the world uh, simultaneously this past weekend. Had a $150 million worldwide debut, which is uh, not bad. We'll see how it goes. The whole reason that Pacific Rim even got a sequel is that the original had, I think, an even higher budget of like $190 million. It barely made $100 million here in the U.S., but it made over $400 million worldwide, which is why it got a sequel. Yes. This is a big global play. So what it didn't make here, it did a lot of business overseas. And now it's as all predicted. about the waiting game. As predicted, now it's all about the waiting game. How much money will it end up with? This was a, a franchise. I think they were hoping to start a franchise Oh, if the numbers are going to be there for a third one. We'll it, see. It's so interesting because you remember when the when Pacific Rim came out, mm -hmm. they had everything around this movie. They yeah. had comic books leading up to it. It was a huge campaign, and I think that one they were really hoping was going to break out into a massive franchise. They got the sequel because of the worldwide box office. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the film yet. I'll admit it. Um, but from what I hear, it feels like that it was setting up two different types of movies in one. That's well, my understanding. Is that correct? It's it, You can tell that they're trying to launch a franchise off of it in the sense that, you know, what I loved about Pacific Rim, the first one that kind of made it work for me was the kind of unique take and look that Guillermo del Toro gave it, and, and it sort of transcended what it was. And this feels like, I, I kind of, I compared it to Power Rangers in the sense of it just feels like, a big blockbuster movie that was made to sell a bunch of tickets around the world and launch a franchise and not much else. There's not a whole lot of the craft yeah. into it in the sense of like, oh, wow, that movie in and of itself was great. It just feels like it was. it's a big, dumb blockbuster. Y you know what people can do if they want to? What's that? They can go watch the six-minute version with puppies on our YouTube channel. That's true. They we can do, do have that. a version with puppies. Star Wars The Last Jedi is coming out on Blu-ray tomorrow. But it is. But let's talk about what's going on with the cast and their other movies. Well, you know, we have John Boyega. He's, of course, the headliner of uh, Specific Rim Uprising, kind of taking over the leading man role from Idris Elba and Charlie Hunnam in the last movie. So I wanted to kind of look at the new class uh, with, from The Force Awakens and how they're doing kind of post Force Awakens. So these are all opening weekends post Star Wars The Force Awakens with the new cast. That's Andy Serkis, John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, uh, Adam Driver. Of course, he does mostly indies, so he's not on this list. But the, the new crew, I wanted to see how they're doing. It's true. He very interestingly does the biggest franchise in the world yeah. and an entire series of amazing indie yeah. movies that you should check out throughout the rest of the year. Lupita Nyong'o is driving the money train because yeah. she has the top two debuts from both with Disney movies of the new Star Wars cast. Black Panther, obviously, number one. Uh, Andy Serkis, also in that movie, he did the motion capture for Snoke. Lupita Nyong'o, number two. Then you look at Oscar Isaac. He was Apocalypse and X-Men Apocalypse. He had a big opening weekend there. And Andy Serkis, again, War for the Planet of the Apes. And then Daisy Ridley, part of the uh, uh, ensemble that launched Murder on the Orient Express. So you see there's a lot of blockbuster plays from this kind of new cast. But mm -hmm. outside of Disney... Kind of mixed results. The new class is still finding its legs outside of the Star Wars Oscar franchise. Isaac obviously is a journeyman, and he also does all kinds of different movies. It'll be interesting to see who has the most lasting career mm -hmm. out of this new cast. Um, they're all going to work. They are. They're all going to work for the rest of their lives. But who's really going to be the Harrison Ford of this group? Well, and it's been fun to see, you know, some of them had a lot of indie creds before Star Wars, mm -hmm. so they've kind of continued down that road. There are people like Daisy Ridley that hadn't done a lot. And even John Boyega, he'd been in a few things. He'd done a 
Attack, Attack Block. Block. He'd done a couple things that people had heard of, but you know that was sort of his first big splashy movie. So it's it's been it's going to be very curious to see where they all go. You know, Andy Serkis is kind of branching into directing and trying to make a name for himself, not just as, an, as a motion capture actor, but as an actor. Now that's going to be interesting to see what he does with this Mo- Mowgli. I think it's called Mowgli, Mowgli right? his Jungle Book, his, his jungle version of the book Jungle Book. Up. I happen to think he is. I, I don't like that distinction that people make between motion capture performance and quote-unquote real performance, mm. I think Andy Serkis is just a fantastic he actor. Is. And I would like to see him make more of a name for himself as himself. He must have the top box office to date, though, of all of them, if you include the work they did before, because he is... Well, before Lord Force of Awakens, Rings. yeah, he's yeah. got Lord of the Rings, he's got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, this is this is post-Force Awakens, you know, not non-Jedi work. But uh, so, I just thought, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that cast is doing. That is interesting. Still we should check up out. on that uh, every once in a while. All-time domestic. Now, yeah. Black well, Panther. Well, yeah, Black Panther, yeah, drops to the number two spot. So that's had the subline B. Black Panther dethroned. However, it broke a few weekends. First of all, I, I looked this up. It had the, the fourth best sixth weekend of all time. And I was looking at these records, you know, I think, you know, the second weekend, we were like, it had the second best second yeah. weekend and had the fourth best third weekend. Every single one of its first six weekends has been in the top five money makers. So, you know, of all th- time, of all time the, the third best fifth weekend. Black Panther is the only movie to ever do that, to have its first six weekends be among the top five highest gro- grossing uh, uh, grosses for that weekend. That, that, is, that is something that no movie, not Avatar, not Titanic, not The Force Awakens, has ever done. The staying power of that of that movie, but that's a very obscure, weird record that I just sort of looked up. Let's no, talk that's, about <laughs> that. Is but it's so notable still. It is. It, it just goes to show you how, the power of this movie and how much people keep going back to see it. But the big records that it passed, it became, and we predicted this last week, it passed the domestic gross here in North America of the Avengers to become not only the highest grossing comic book movie of all time here in North America, but one of the top five highest grossing domestic releases oh of all God. time. This is now your top five domestic grocers ever. Black Panther kicks the Avengers to the curb. He is now number five and a very realistic shot of knocking out Titanic for that third spot. We're going to look at the, the adjusted for inflation, which I think is equally as, as impressive. Uh, but right now, domestic grocers, Black Panther, now one of the top five domestic grocers. I think even with that amazing opening weekend, and I'm sure if you go back and check the tape, I, I referred to this as kind of a, an outside shot, a remote possibility, uh, simply because it was so impossible to predict the legs that this movie would have drink apparently this is a new thing people play a drinking game every time i say legs oh yeah but that's what black panther has they do it when i say legit so legit drink oh there you go don't Uh, we don't advocate (laughs) no we don't do that (laughs) uh but uh again it's not just the opening with black panther it is the repeat business it is the word of mouth um it is now one of the five highest grossing movies of all time and may end up being as high as number three which is pretty damn impressive it's wildly impressive. It is wildly impressive. And I think as well as we thought this movie was going to do, it has done even better than that. And it's very, very exciting because it's a good movie. Um, We'd like to see more of the same. And I told you guys this morning as I passed the billboard for Infinity War, Mm -hmm. passing by Disney, he was right there front and center, the biggest figure on that particular billboard. Smartly and rightly so. What about the world? So the worldwide, if you look at the highest grossing comic movies worldwide, which also happen to be the top five highest grossing Marvel movies, we talked about this again last week. It is official. It passed Iron Man 3. It is now worldwide the highest grossing solo comic book movie and the third highest grossing ever, it's second only to the two Avengers films. For now, we have another Avengers film on its way in a little more than a month. But Black Panther passes Iron Man 3. So now if you're talking solo comic book movies, it has the title uh, domestically and internationally. And if you're talking all-time comic book movies, it has the number one title here in the United States and the number three title worldwide. So it's not just domestic strength, it's worldwide strength. Oh, yeah. This 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 has appeal across the world. What do you think the chances are that it'll lap up again? What do you think? Probably How not. do you mean? That it'll that take it's that get number up to, two. Uh, 
it would need about, I think, if we put the, JT, can you throw that graphic back up? I want to do some just quick calculus in my head. It would need about uh, 100 and what, 70 million yeah. more dollars. I don't know yeah. if it's got that much left in the tank, particularly again with Infinity War, with Ready Player One this week, and Infinity War coming out in about a month. But every time I made a prediction about Black Panther's legs, drink again. And how much it might have left in the tank, I've been wrong. So I would say it's probably not likely, mm. but you never know. I, 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 but I, I, I would be very surprised if it had, you know, that much extra because that's, you know, 170 million dollars. I know when you look at a gross of 1.2 billion dollars, it doesn't sound but like that much, but it's a lot late in the game for six weeks into yeah. release. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. I keep surprising us. Let's it look does. at a uh, adjusted. All right, so adjusted for inflation. And again, I, this is not to, to diminish what it's done. I think this goes gets more impressive every time we bring it up. But adjusted for inflation, which basically means if movie tickets cost the same today as they did always, if everyone had always paid the same cost of admission for going to the movies, this is where Black Panther would fall today. It is currently at number 40. It's outgrossed The Last Jedi. Uh, past that domestic gross. Uh, it had just outgrossed Home Alone. It's coming up on Independence Day. It's coming up on the first Spider-Man movie. Again, these were massive monster hits. Yeah. Summer hits, by the way. Though the, It's flanked by, by two summer movies and two Christmas uh, holiday movies. Uh, again, going to show you just kind of the unprecedented amount of money it's generated for the time of year that it was released. But it is looking up at only 39 movies, financially, only 39 other movies ever made have made more money than this movie. Which, again, is is impressive. Yeah. That is, when you think of the amount of movies that have been made in mm -hmm. the world, that that is that, where that sits. And we've talked about this before. Like, pretty much if you adjust for inflation, you're never catching on with the one. You're just never, ever catching it. No. And the reason is we live in such a different world now with so much more content and yeah. things like that. Um, there's just so much more media available. But what this movie has done is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Other movies, I guess, came out this week. Other we movies came Sherlock out. Sherlock Gnomes. Sherlock Gnomes. Spencer Gnomes. Gilbert's favorite film oh, of the year. Really? I didn't know that. We're going to have to talk about that. I haven't <laughs> no, seen it yet, kidding. but I plan on it. Uh, yeah, no. Let's look at the rest of the top five. Okay, I can only imagine the surprise hit from last week is in the same spot number three it dropped just 20 percent and added over 600 theaters that brings its gross to almost 40 million dollars and i would not be shocked if we saw another big gross this weekend this is easter weekend this is kind of a uh, christian uh, aimed movie it is a very faith-based movie i think there's going to be a lot of people taking this long weekend coming up here in the u.s and elsewhere to perhaps go see that movie. So mm -hmm. we're, again, when we're looking- When do we have a long weekend coming up? This weekend. Oh, good Good Friday news. is on Friday. So oh, we got are we good off? Friday. Uh, we're not, I don't think we're off, well. but many people are off for the Easter holiday. So we are, uh, I think a lot of people might be going to see, I can only imagine. So it is surely gonna have a gross over $50 million. I talked about this with a friend of mine. Everyone's always talking about what other genre could do the the Blumhouse sort of micro budget genre. And this is it, this is the only one, is the, the faith-based films have the exact same model. They're really cheaply, inexpensively made yeah. much of the time. They rally a very strong base. Yeah, People come out in droves to see these movies. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, we addressed it a little bit last week, but you know, the thing, the, the, what else the risk with it is it's, it's feast or famine, really. Yes. It's feast or famine in the sense that uh, you're, you're either gonna get a huge surprise hit, like I can only imagine, or it's too niche for whatever reason, timing, who knows? There's, there's no formula for this. So it, it just makes almost no money. There was another movie called Paul Apostle of Christ, mm -hmm. which opened up, which was again, aimed at a faith-based Christian audience that didn't really make much noise at all at the, in the box office. It was in the top 10, but you know, didn't make a whole but lot of money. But it's the same so. thing with, um, we talk about the Bloomhouse hits, but there are plenty of movies that they mm -hmm. make that don't hit or yeah. that they actually just shelve because their model is to make them so cheaply. It doesn't really matter because when they get a hit, it's so massive. It's just weird to me, the parallels. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Sherlock Gnomes, fourth place. That's a pretty low gross for an animated film. It had a $50 million plus budget, so it's going to need to have some real staying power. Tomb Raider drops to fifth place. That's going to struggle to reach $100 million here domestically. I don't think no it's going to do it. No big franchise there. No, I mean, it, it, again, that was one that was kind of a global play, but it's already open everywhere. So mm. there's not, whatever it's making now is going to be what it makes 
we'll see that number when we look at the international charts here in a minute. But I, I think even though they were looking for a big global growth, definitely not, I don't think, the domestic growth that they wanted for that. Yeah. Didn't really click with an audience here. And then a few holdovers. Game Night held really well. That uh, dropped 26%. Love, Simon had a really kind of underwhelming debut, uh, the, the silver lining there. It had a small, pretty small drop, 35% drop. So, you know, it's holding somewhat well. And then Unsane, which we were talking about earlier today, Steven Soderbergh's latest movie, that movie grossed $3.7 million in 2,000 theaters. So that's a really low per theater average, about $1,800. But the movie was made for just over a million dollars. So. Right. With And it was, it was so, it's so clearly Soderbergh entertaining himself by being experimental with films. Yeah, you know, he's you know, like, he's doing make what a he movie does. with an iPhone. That's good for him. Yeah. Um, hey, Isle of Dogs. I love dogs, and the movie audience loves dogs. Yes. Also, yeah. terrible, awful on my part. Anyway, <laughs> it had the best per screen average of the weekend, and it was the highest for a debut film this year, even beating uh, Black Panther's per screen average on its first weekend of release. $59,825 on 27 screens. That works out to a gross of about $1.6 million. Uh, Grand Budapest Hotel had a much higher per screen average, but it also was on much fewer screens. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but I'm just going to roll with it. It so, works. We um, get it. Yeah, a lot of audience. You know, Wes Anderson plays to a crowd, a very kind of indie uh, crowd, Some, sometimes a little more niche than others, but they showed up in limited release on its first week and see Isle of Dogs. Really good per screen average. Yeah, and you can see the review of Isle of Dogs as well as some other gems that you're not going to want to miss right here on Screen Junkies News. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, let's look at what's happening on our domestic chart to date. Domestic chart, 2018 North American domestic chart. Not a lot of movement. A few things. Wrinkle in Time jumps up one spot to number four. It is hoping to inch over $100 million. It's going to be a crawl. We'll see if it makes it. I think it might, but we'll see. And to join that $100 million club that includes Fifty Shades now, uh, Peter Rabbit, Black Panther, obviously, that's going to be up there till the summer at least. And Cities drops down. And then I, I mentioned Game Night having good sh uh, staying power. It jumped onto the list. It's now up at number six. I mean, it's going to get bumped off eventually. But when you look at a movie like that outgrossing things like Red Sparrow and Maze Runner and some movies that I think a lot of people put a lot you know of faith what? into, uh, that's pretty impressive. You know what, North America? We're getting it wrong when Red yeah. Sparrow outpaces Paddington 2. Yes. We're I just I, getting it wrong. I didn't want to mention it. Paddington 2 no. knocked off the list. I'll pour one out. If it helps, Red Sparrow is probably only going to be on this list for one week. It's it it's jumped doesn't. on the list, and I bet we're going to see dropped off the list next week because Tomb Raider, another movie, is going to jump on there. So it's kind of a, a pyrrhic victory yeah. for Red Sparrow because it's not going to be on this list. But you me. know what? Criminally underseen. Bear. Yeah. Paddington 2. Check yeah, it out. Check it out. Worldwide. World. Worldwide. Uh, we talk about Pacific Rim Uprising. It debuts at number 10 off the strength of its $150 million opening weekend worldwide. It dropped out Forever Young, one of the many Chinese films on this list. That's now off the list. Uh, Tomb Raider, we mentioned, it's up over $200 million worldwide. They really need to run up this number if they want to start the franchise. As, as we mentioned, it's not performing to expectation here in the United States, so we'll see how it continues to do worldwide. Other than that, Pretty much the same. Uh, again, Black Panther is just running up the score at this point. One point two three billion dollars. Unbelievable! It's so crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see what if this is what Black Panther's doing. You know, we'll see what Infinity War does. I can't even imagine at this point. <sighs> Who knows? I, I, I just it's, feel like it's, it's becoming like it's funny just like money. Scrooge at this point. McDuck money yeah. at this point. It's just like diving. It's just it's just all of Walt Disney diving into a vat of gold. Yeah. All, the entire company is doing it, Dan. Scrooge McDuck, also a Disney character. Also a Disney character. So I think Conveniently. The, the, they pay themselves royalties for that. Bob Iger is just like, it's crazy. It's make a lot of money. It's crazy. But you know what's going to probably be the top of the box office this weekend is Mr. Steven Spielberg. This is my prediction. Yes. Mr. Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One. Ready Player One opens on Thursday here in the U.S. to get a jump on the Easter holidays. It's opening in Thursday some places, some places opening Friday. It opens pretty much everywhere in the world except for Brazil, Germany, Poland, and Japan this weekend. So hmm. 
Ready Player One is another one that is going to make the bulk of its money in the next few weeks leading up to Infinity War. Everyone has got to make as much money as they can before Infinity War because then no one else is going to be making Oh, money. nobody. Yeah, that's going to be for it forever. Weeks. Except for Black Panther. Wouldn't yeah. that be funny? Well, but then we've got, it's like a gauntlet because you yeah. have Infinity War and then Deadpool, Deadpool and then Solo, Solo and then we're deep into the summer And then it's the season. summer and it's just, ah, it's insane. images. Uh, God's Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness and Tyler Perry's Acrimony with Taraji P. Henson are the only the other two wide releases here domestically so it's really ready player one's box office to own it's gonna be number one but it's actually tracking for right now the latest estimate a relatively low opening weekend however this tracking was out as the reviews were starting to come in or there were very few reviews the reviews have been pretty good so far about 83 percentage wise on rotten tomatoes the average score is around 7.2 which is you know those are those are good reviews yeah. not Great, but good reviews. Kind of, kind of what we gave the film. Yeah, um, I mean, it's enjoyable. It's, it's an know? enjoyable film. It's Steven Spielberg. It's definitely four quadrant. I think there's a curiosity factor about this film. Yeah. I I predict that it'll do a nice, serviceable bit of business. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how audiences how audiences actually react to the film and what the cinema score is versus the critical response. Yeah. Because I do think that this is one that that might diverge. Well, the clock starts now because... Because it's the, opening on Wednesday. Because it's opening on uh, Wednesday night, I think, of first screenings, and then Thursday here in the U.S. So yeah. it's, 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 we'll see how it does, but it's got to make a lot of money. It's got to make a lot of money fast yeah. because there's a big Thanos-sized galaxy opening up, much like we were at the end of last year with yeah. the Jedi-sized galaxy. We'll see if it overperforms. I was reading today, March is actually... As, as, as successful as Black Panther has been, March has actually been a pretty sluggish month box office wise. It's down from last year, which last year was not a great year box office wise, but really nothing that was released in the year of March, in the month of March so far here domestically, has really launched. Nothing, there's been no breakout hit. It's really just been all carryover from Black Panther and then a bunch of kind of mediocre debuts. So. Yeah, we'll see how April does and then heading into the summer. Of course, that is blockbuster season. Yep. I don't think that we're heading into a world where that's not going to be blockbuster season, but it is a very different world at the box office in total as the years progress. It really is. For a million reasons that we discuss all the time that can be encapsulated into one word, streaming. Streaming. Um, we're just in a different world in that sense. But we'll see what happens this weekend with Mr. Steven Spielberg. We'll see how the Berg does. Does he overperform expe expectations <laughs> or expectations? Either one. We'll find out. We'll talk about it right here next week. How often do you feel like we sound like morning show hosts? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Every time that we sound like morning show hosts, uh, have something nourishing to eat. I was. I was going to say the other That's thing. True. No. Yeah. Have an apple. Have an apple. Have an apple. Every single time. That was one. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. I love charting with you, Dan. It's so much fun to chart, and I'm going to keep charting, and I'm working on even more number crunches and chartings and everything else because I love doing this. We're eventually just going to have a sub channel, Math with Dan. Math with Dan, which is ironic because <laughs> by and large, except for the very reasonably simple mathematical operations that are required to do this, I'm terrible. Oh, I uh, am, could not even do this. So. If this was trigonometry with Dan, we'd all be lost. That's what I'm <laughs> well, thank God. It's just charting. Yes. And we have charts for you. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. How do you think Ready Player One will do? And in Infinity War, is that gauntlet just going to destroy everything for the next 10 months? They're going to throw down the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah.